Hi, my name's Lady Phil, to those who know of my work with UK Black Pride, but my full name's Phil Apoku Jimma, and I'm the co-founder and executive director of UK Black Pride. I also, in my day job, because that's my gay job, I am the CEO or the executive director of Kaleidoscope Trust, which is a human rights LGBT charity that works to uphold human rights for LGBT people, mainly in the Commonwealth. Um, my background, I would like to say it's varied, but a lot of it is about tackling injustices, um, discrimination, work around intersectionality, race, gender, class, um, and mainly putting people first and ensuring that they have the rights that they need to survive and win in the world. So UK Black Pride has achieved so much and continues to do so. I think it's so hard for me to talk about the one achievement because there are so many, whether it's responding to an email of somebody who has just come out and feels quite lonely and isolated and we're able to signpost them to a particular organization that's an achievement whether it's we had 10,000 people that descended over Haggerston Park in 2019 and we've grown from only having 200 people so that again is an achievement but I think no, I think, I believe, and I know that UK Black Pride wouldn't be the success it is today without the amazing team that I have around me that work all year round to make this happen so that there's a home and a place where people feel that they can belong, that they're not judged, where they can dance, celebrate, cry, laugh, eat and drink together in a way that feels so positive and so loving and a way that they see solidarity for each other. So yeah, that's, that's proud. That's a proud moment for me. Well, we celebrated this year, of course, because COVID has postponed, put people in their tracks right across the globe. Um, and this pandemic has touched everybody's lives. So we decided that this year it would be an online event. And we had this on the 16th of August. We had an array of so many brilliant, talented performers and artists, um, poets, we had workshops. So we created spaces. We had a main stage like we would every year, um, which was live streamed with all of the performers um, performing there and speakers and DJs. We had a well-being area, which had a number of workshops in there that were talking about, you know, mental health, um, asylum, we're talking about religion, faith, belief. We had an area which was called the Desi Room, which was hosted by an amazing young person called Ryan Lange, um, which also looked at like Bollywood nightclub and the feel and, you know, <laughs> I, I, you know, I watched it back and I was like, wow, we are really looking at true inclusion here about what our Asian siblings who happen to be queer are saying. We then also had um, uh, another area, which was our young folk, which when we talk about young people, we wanted to ensure that we were having an intergenerational conversation so we knew what their needs were their aspirations their hopes their dreams you know and how we could be better and more inclusive as a pride to talk about those issues as well as challenge them but find solutions and some of that was done in line with the albert kennedy trust and colors youth festival the Albert Kennedy Trust is an organization which really looks at supporting young people who are facing homelessness or who have been made homeless. They, found, they find secure housing for them and also help them onto the labor market to support themselves. Um, and apart from that, we had a headliner and I, I can talk for England on how wonderful this event was um, on Sunday, but we had a headliner 
from Philadelphia, Vincent, who had won um, a four chairs challenge in one of the reality TV programs. And his voice was just so melodic and beautiful. And, you know, he made everyone sort of get tearful and emotional and just connect to the music. But importantly, he celebrated the essence of what Black Pride is supposed to be about. Music plays such a big role in, U uh, in UK Black Pride. And I think in Black people's lives in general, you know, music has been a way to protest. It's been a way to sit in silence in your thoughts whilst listening to something which you absolutely feel so connected to. It's been a way to celebrate and party and enjoy with like-minded people. And it's also been a way of um, many of our black and brown communities showcasing their talent because they play instruments, because they sing, because they speak to spoken word, um, background music. So it's always there. And at UK Black Pride, we have a range of amazing DJs like Biggie C, Toya DeLazy, Big John, who, you know, use their their skills in playing particular tracks and tunes that really connect to our community. So it will always be there and it has always been there. Wow, musical highlights. Oh, you know, every year at UK Black Pride, there's, and let me just backtrack because I think that I want you to know that I love music. Music is foundational and it's transformational for me, whether it's in my own self-care or whether it's listening to my amazing daughter singing, you know, with her beautiful, soulful, jazz, jazzy voice. But at UK Black Pride, one of the highlights we have is the electric slide. So the moment candy comes on, everyone gets in line and they're thinking about which direction they're going, whether it's left first or right first or forward. And people are lined up. And as soon as that beat drops, everyone is in sync and doing this electric slide. And for the first time this year, we've not been able to have hundreds of people doing the electric slide. But what my team and I did on Sunday is that uh, we played out the electric slide and danced like it was our last dance um, for our live stream online events. So yeah, I'd say that's a musical highlight alongside the music that I listen to every day, whether it's Eartha Kitt, Nina Simone, whether it's you know, Notorious B.I.G. or whether it's uh, Whitney Houston or Donnell Jones, whatever it may be, I think music is, is food and it's nourishing and it's so refreshing to hear because it also makes you feel good. And even if you've had a breakup, you listen to a particular song, you cry and you let it out and you kind of try and move on. So Big Plea, public can always support UK Black Pride. It's not just for black people, it is for everybody. As long as you know your values align with what we're trying to do, you can go onto the website, sign up to our mailing list, which is ukblackpride.org.uk. You can join us on social media, all of our Twitter handles, Instagram and Facebook is just at UK Black Pride, one word, lowercase. And also you can join us on LinkedIn where we're starting to connect with some of those brands and corporates and organizations to help them through some of their strategy around diversity and inclusion within the workplace. Um, and you can also support by, you know, speaking up and speaking out where you feel, of course, comfortable against the, you know, horrendous racism that is seen, whether it's structurally, systemically, whether it's over, indirect or direct, stand up and speak out. And those who have, you know, a penny that they've saved over lockdown or those organisations that do have funding, 
is by donating so that we can continue to do the work we do in amplifying people of colour within the UK.